Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm all alone today. Tyler is out of town and he is really missing out because uh, Jenny and Jerry over at Creekside Nursery put up their bat signal this weekend and said that all of their annuals and even some perennials were buy one get one free. So there's still a few places in our garden that I would consider uh, plantable. There's some holes that I've not been liking seeing and under our big oak tree in the front yard, we haven't really done anything this season. So buy one get one free annuals is a perfect time to pack out the space and have some late season interest. You'd normally think that late July is not the time to be planting annuals and probably not if you're, if you're paying full price for them, but these were buy one get one free and they're already very large. So they'll have that instant impact that we're looking for. They'll fill the space and sort of like be nice for the eye for the rest of the season. Here in zone 7B in Charlotte, North Carolina, we still have probably three months of good growth season left for the summer. Uh, usually a late October, early November, we get a cold snap. And of course, that'll take all of our tender annuals out. Um, but I'd say we still have three good months and if I one get one free, you just can't beat that. So we're gonna take you step by step through the garden. I know there's a lot of different annuals here. I'll tell you all about all of them as we're planting them. Okay, so the first place we're gonna take care of with annuals is the large oak tree garden behind me. So this oak tree has three trunks that are conjoined. It's really huge, and so a few years back, we decided to put a garden all the way around it. We put beautiful guacamole hostas around it. We've put a hedge of hydrangeas on one side, and the voles have really taken their toll on this area. They took, I think, three of the guacamole hostas, if not more, that were huge. They've taken a lot of hydrangeas, and so we've struggled with it a little bit, but last year we packed this place full of beautiful caladiums and it was a gorgeous show. We got those in the ground early on and uh, we enjoyed them throughout the season until the, last, the first frost. Um, and this year we just have not made it around to putting anything in this space. So we're gonna do that with annuals. I've got beautiful Color Blaze coleus here. So this one, uh, the red one is the Color Blaze Wicked Hot coleus. This one's gonna go 24 to 40 inches. It gets really big, really shrub-like, and as long as we give it a lot of water, these are gonna do beautifully for us. The other one I've got here is the Lime Time Coleus. Um, this has that beautiful chartreuse color. Um, these can do sun or shade, um, but I think that the, the Lime Time is gonna give us that deeper color. It'll get a little brighter in the sun, a little deeper green in the shade. Uh, so these will both get really big for us and do beautiful. I've also got a few um, of the Wisteria Impatience. This is the Rockapulco series from Proven Winners. Um, and these are beautiful. This is a shade annual. Um, we have a few of these in the back garden already, and they have also gotten really large, like shrub-like. So I think I'm gonna pop a few of these in here just for some bloom interest. Um, and I think it'll be really gorgeous. Here we go. All right guys, so I've got our coleus and our impatience all in the ground underneath our oak tree and they're looking really nice. So what I ended up doing was taking the lime time coleus and sort of tr creating a drift right here, a nice pop of color. Obviously our house is over uh, to my right and so we'll look this way at the oak tree and I wanted this uh, really bright chartreuse sort of pop and contrast between the tree, which is really dark, um, and the edge of the bed. So what I've got are the lime time coleus and then I put uh, the red coleus right in the middle. 
Um, and so it'll be that nice contrast between the tree, the red, and the lime thyme. And then uh, I put our wisteria um, and patience right here on the outside. I had a, sort of a few pockets left over. Um, so I just popped those right in. Hopefully they'll get really big and uh, fill out. I've got water to this bed. Everything in here is already on a drip system. I've even put some sort of sprinkler type attachments to our drip system in areas out here just so that I can make sure this gets a lot of water because we end up uh, last year and this year we put a lot of annuals in here that love water. Um, and if the more water we give them, the bigger we'll get and we want them to get really big. You could also tell that I was using the larger auger than I normally do. I usually use about a three inch auger and this one I believe is a five inch. I did that because uh, we have a lot of rocks and things in these beds out in our front yard. Um, there used to be a gravel driveway here I believe. So a lot of that gravel ended up in our garden beds. Um, so I used the bigger auger just to make sure that I got that soil nice and loosened. And then I had a lot of loose soil that I could pack around the, the ball of the plant. All right, so we're all done with this space. Let's go to the back garden and plant our last few annuals. All right, everyone. So we are in our south side garden now. Um, I have this beautiful Senorita Rosalita Cleome. Um, I believe that the common name for these is cat's whiskers because they have these long stamens that sort of stick out outside of the actual flower itself, um, and it's really pretty. This one is a really nice lilac purple color, which I really like for this space. You can see we have some tough stuff, aha hydrangeas here. This is their first year, so they're not big yet. They're not covered in blooms yet. Um, we also have some second year foxgloves here. Those will bloom obviously next year and they'll be really tall and beautiful, but this year they're just foliage. Um, and then we have some Midnight Masquerade Pinstem in here that has a really nice dark foliage, but they are out of bloom too. So we could really use some blooms here, something, some sort of a color to give us uh, that push through the rest of the season. Um, so I'm gonna plant this here. Um, and I think it's the perfect view too from our back patio. Um, if you look down this, this aisle here, we've got a lot of contrasting colors um, and this purple will look really great. All right, so moving right along here, we have our gorgeous sun patient. This is Compact Blush Pink. Um, this is in the impatient family. So you can see it's got those tender stems. It's gonna drink a lot of water. Um, and I think back here, so um, sun patients can go in the sun or in the shade. And uh, we're sort of in this back part of our garden in the corner where we've got lots of shade plants. Um, and this is sort of where um, the south side garden ends and the moon garden takes off. So I think this is gonna be a good spot for this blush pink color. Um, this obviously is sort of a, a weird shape right now, but when we give this thing water and we, uh, if I pinch it back a little bit, it will bush out and get really big, just like the impatience that we put in the front yard. So I'm gonna put that one here. Um, and then we've got our beautiful uh, begonia here. So this is the Pegasus begonia. And like I said, I, I believe uh, we've told you guys this before. We really love this plant. Um, it has gorgeous foliage. It's just really, really interesting to look at. And uh, because we're getting into the moon garden here, um, I didn't really want anything that was gonna bloom um, flowers or have uh, sort of like purple flowers or a different color flowers other than white. Um, but we do have so much green foliage here that we really needed something that would change it up and uh, be of interest. So I'm gonna put this here, but the really exciting thing about this is though it is an annual, um, you can take this in during the winter and uh, use it as a house plant. And it's got really beautiful, obviously the foliage stays, the foliage gets a little bit darker even when it's in the house. Um, so I do plan on digging this up and bringing it in so that we can use it as a house plant over the winter. I'm gonna get to planting.
All right, everyone. So the final annual that we're gonna be planting today in our buy one, get one free annual adventure is the gorgeous Supertunia Vista Snowdrift. Now I will say this is probably one of the biggest bangs for your buck that you will get out of any of the Supertunia from the series. Vista Snowdrift, it gets 12 to 24 inches wide and I will say it will get every single bit of that. It will be covered in beautiful white blooms. This is definitely a dependable Supertunia. Um, we are in our moon garden right now, and this year we haven't gotten quite as much bloom out of this garden as we like, so it's been mostly foliage. We have some beautiful begonias in this space. We have gorgeous cone flowers and some different things. Um, but I will say uh, we usually have some hydrangeas right here. Uh, these are the wee white hydrangeas and behind me we have a white David Austin rose. So we usually get a really big uh, pop of blooms right in the center. But this year our hydrangeas were sort of attacked early on by bugs and um, our rose did the same. And so we sort of lost that big flush of blooms in the beginning that we normally look, look forward to. And so I've been looking for ways to add some color right here and add that white back in sort of as a foundation. And the Supertunia Mini Vista Snowdrift will absolutely do that. Um, I'm gonna leave some space here because I have a few plants that I want to plant in this, uh, this space that I'm waiting on but I'm gonna plant them back a little bit. That'll give us room uh, for the plants that we're gonna plant, and then they'll just encircle them and sort of turn this entire space white behind our gorgeous boxwoods. Let's get to planting. All right, everyone, that is it for today's buy one, get one free annuals adventure. I hope that you guys are looking for some deals in your area. I know there's some great ones out there and we still have plenty of time left in the growing season for all of them to get really big and beautiful and make a big impact on your garden. If you like this video, be sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.